This morning for communion, we are going to be reading from Galatians 1, verses 1 through 5. Galatians 1, verses 1 through 5. In these passages, we're going to focus on Christ's perfect sacrifice for believers and how he gave his life so that we can be rescued from this evil age and be reconciled to God. So if you do not have a Bible, there are men up front who are ready to provide one for you. As they come down the aisle, just raise your hand and they'll give you one. And if you do not own a Bible, you may take this one with you as a gift from Grace Bible Church. So please pray with me. Father, thank you for your kindness. It is your kindness that drew us to you. It is your kindness that would provide a Savior in your Son who would rescue us out of this evil time. So we praise you, Father, for all that you do for us, for all of your care. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's read together Galatians 1, verses 1 through 5. Paul, an apostle, not sent from men, nor through the agency of man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. As noted in the text, the book of Galatians is written by the Apostle Paul. The book of Galatians is the second New Testament book written, and Paul's intent is to defend the central theme, the central doctrine, doctrine of justification by faith alone. Paul wants to make it perfectly clear that works do not provide any element of salvation. Works are not the source, and they are not the cause of salvation. There are 27 books in the New Testament, and Paul wrote 13 of them. And most would agree that the book of James was the first book written in the New Testament, and it was written in about 48 or 49 A.D. James states in this text that salvation must result in a changed life. Faith without works is dead. Wherever salvation has occurred, it will show up in a transformed life and result in righteous works. So why did Paul need to address this issue? Well, the book of Galatians was written shortly after the book of James and was written because there were false teachers following Paul to his newly founded churches. Paul's book is to the churches of Galatia, and Galatia is not a city, it's a region. Paul, in, on his first missionary journey, visited Galatia and established churches in the cities of Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. And because these were his first churches, he, they were very dear to him. The false teachers were called Judaizers. They came from Jerusalem. They were Jews. They professed Christ and they professed to be Christians. This gave them access to the church. MacArthur says this about the Judaizers. They were dogging the steps of Paul in Gentile cities trying to impose Old Testament Jewish covenantal elements on Gentiles who know nothing about Judaism and know nothing about the Old Testament, telling them that they need to be circumcised as adults and then they need to introduce into their lives all the ceremonies and rituals of the Old Covenant or they can't be saved. 
Paul launches a strong written attack against the Judaizers in the book of Galatians. Paul is, as we know, a proclaimer of truth and a protector of that truth. And the truth is clearly revealed in the book of Galatians. As you read the book of Galatians, you can see that Paul was under extreme distress. The false teachers were creating questions about Paul's gospel message and Paul's authority to teach. They were obviously telling Galatians to not believe his message because he was not a true apostle. So we see in the book of Galatians Paul careful, his, Paul's carefully constructed response. Here is how one author describes his response. Now, as carefully argued as this book is, as brilliantly presented as it is, as masterfully as the argument unfolds in the book, there is no treatise of academic nature. It is a hot, volatile, righteously angry presentation. So let's look again at the uh, first or the opening verses of Galatians. Paul's writing is so concise and so clear, even in the in his introductory verses or his greeting. Paul is anxious and determined immediately to address the false teachers. He's looking to establish three things. His authority as an apostle, his message, and his motive. His authority comes in verses 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle, not sent from men, nor through the agency of man, but through Jesus Christ, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Paul didn't describe how he became an apostle or what an apostle is, but merely affirmed that he is an apostle chosen, commissioned, and empowered, not by men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Paul described his authority with brevity, brevity and conciseness, conciseness. In verses 3 and 4, we see Paul clearly states his message. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. Another thing that God, John MacArthur says about Paul's greeting is this. Grace and peace need to be understood this way. Basically, grace is the source of salvation. Peace is the result of it. Let me say it another way. Grace is the sum of all blessings provided by God. Peace is an enjoyment of all those blessings provided by God and experienced by the believer. We are saved by grace into peace. We have a peace that surpasses all understanding. We have peace with God. We don't fear death. We don't fear what the world will bring. We don't fear. We have no fear of an enemy. We have no fear of Satan. We have no fear of demons. We have no fear of whatever happens in life because we are at peace with God. Our eternity is settled, and we're eager to be in his presence. That is the profound peace that grace brings. End of quote. Notice the source of the greeting in verse 3. It is from both God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 3, it describes further where the grace and peace come from. The Lord Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present age according to the will of our God and Father. Listen again how clear and brief Paul is with the gospel in this message. The Lord Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins 
so that he might rescue us from this present evil age, according to the will of God and Father. We could also look at it this way. He saved us from the domain of darkness. This present evil age is the age we are living in. The gospel is a rescue, and the death of Christ provided that rescue. It is the only sacrifice that will atone of the sins of the sins of God's people and rescue them from the domain of darkness from this present evil age. That's the gospel, plain and simple. Also, note that it is according to the will of God. All planned by God and carried out by Christ. There is no provision in this for circumcision or ritual of any kind. The message is again the clear gospel. Through the death and resurrection of Christ, the people of God are rescued from this present evil age, an age which is coming to a horrible end, but again planned by God and executed by His Son. In these verses, we have seen how Paul defends his authority and how he defends the message that he is declaring. And finally, we see his motive in verse 5. To whom be the glory forever. Amen. All of Paul's message is to the glory of God. If you put works or accomplishments or morality or rituals God does not get all the glory. All the glory belongs to Him. It is His works and His alone. So as I mentioned before, the gospel in these passages uh, is simple, it is clear, it's concise. If you are here today and the gospel has not transformed your life, we want you to know that we are glad that you are here this morning. And we pray that you don't leave Grace Bible Church this morning without talking with one of the elders about the freedom that comes with believing in the gospel of Christ. But we also want, to, want you to know that communion is for believers only, so please allow the elements to pass you by. Men, please come and serve us. Believer, please use this time to meditate on God's kindness in saving you and to confess sin for his forgiveness. You may take communion on your own when you are ready, and in a couple of minutes I will close our communion time in prayer.